Chapter 1 Trot and Captain Bill Nobody, said Captain Bill solemnly, ever saw a mermaid and lived to tell the tale. Why not? asked Trot, looking earnestly up into the old sailor's face. They were seated on a bench built around a giant acacia tree that grew just at the edge of the bluff. Below them rolled the blue waves of the great Pacific. A little way behind them was the house, a neat frame cottage painted white and surrounded by huge eucalyptus and pepper trees. So farther behind that, a quarter of a mile distance, but built upon a bend of the coast was the village overlooking a pretty bay. Cap'n Bill and Trot came often to this tree to sit and watch the ocean below them. The sailor man had one meat leg and one hickory leg, and he often said the wooden was the best of the two. Once Cap'n Bill had commanded and owned the anemone, a trading schooner that plied along the coast, and in those days Charlie Griffiths, who was Trot's father, had been the captain's mate. But ever since Cap'n Bill's accident when he lost his leg, Charlie Griffiths had been the captain of the little schooner, while his old master lived peacefully ashore with the Griffiths family. This was about the time Trot was born, and the old sailor became very fond of the baby girl. Her real name was Mare, but when she grew big enough to walk, she took so many busy little steps every day that both her mother and Captain Bill nicknamed her Trot, and so she was thereafter mostly called. It was the old sailor who taught the child to love the sea, to love it almost as much as he and her father did, and these two, who represented the beginning and the end of life, became firm friends and constant companions. Why hasn't anybody seen a mermaid and lived? asked Trot again. "'Cause mermaids is fairies, and ain't meant to be seen by us mortal folk," replied Cap'n Bill. "'But if anyone happens to see him, what then, Cap'n?' "'Then,' he answered slowly, wagging his head, "'the mermaids give him a smile and a wink, and they dives into the water and gets drowned.' "'Suppose they know how to swim, Cap'n Bill?' "'That don't make no difference, Trot.' The mermaids live deep down, and the poor mortals never come up again. The little girl was thoughtful for a moment. But why do folks dive in the water when the mermaids smile and wink? she asked. Mermaids, he said gravely, is the most beautifulest creatures in the world, or the water either. You know what they're like, Trot. They've got a lovely lady's form down to the waist, and then the other half of them is a fish with green and purple and pink scales all down it. Have they got arms, Cap'n Bill? Of course, Trot. Arms like any other lady, and pretty faces that smile and look mighty sweet and fetching. Their hair is long and soft and silky and floats all around them in the water. When they comes up atop the waves, they wring the water out of their hair and sing songs that go right to your heart. If anybody is unlucky enough to be round, just then, the beauty of their mermaids and their sweet songs charm them like magic, so as they plunge into the waves to get to the mermaids. But the mermaids haven't any hearts, Trot. No, more than a fish has. So they laugh when the poor people drown and don't care a fig. That's why I say... And I says it's true that nobody never saw a mermaid and lived to tell the tale. Nobody? asked Trot. Nobody at all. Then how do you know, Cap'n Bill? asked the little girl, looking up into his face with big round eyes. Cap'n Bill coughed. <coughs> then he tried to sneeze to gain time. Then he took out his red cotton handkerchief and wiped his bald head with it, rubbing hard so as to make him think clear. Look, Trot. Ain't that a brig out there, he inquired, pointing to a sail far out in the sea. How does anybody know about mermaids if those who have seen them never live to tell about them, she asked again. Know what about them, Trot? About their green and pink scales and pretty songs and wet hair. They don't know, I guess. But mermaids just naturally has to be like that, or they wouldn't be mermaids. She thought this over. Somebody must have lived, Cap'n Bill, she declared positively. Other fairies have been seen by mortals. Why not mermaids? 
Perhaps they have, Trot. Perhaps they have, he answered musingly. I'm telling you, as it was told to me, but I never stopped to inquire into the matter so close it before. Seems like folks wouldn't know so much about mermaids if they hadn't seen them, and yet, according to all accounts, the victim is bound to get drowned. Perhaps, suggested Trot softly, someone found a photograph of them. That might have been, Trot, that might have been, answered Captain Bill. A nice man was Captain Bill, and Trot knew he always liked to explain everything so she could fully understand it. The aged sailor was not a very tall man, and some people might have called him chubby or even fat. He wore a blue sailor shirt and with white anchors worked on the corners of the broad square collar, and his blue trousers were very wide at the bottom. He always wore one trouser leg over his wooden limb, and sometimes it would flutter in the wind like a flag because it was so wide and the wooden leg so slender. His rough, kersey coat was a pea jacket and came down to his waistline. In the big pockets of his jacket, he kept a wonderful jackknife and his pipe and tobacco and many bits of string and matches and keys and lots of other things. Whenever Cap'n Bill thrust a chubby hand into one of his pockets, Trot watched him with breathless interest, for she never knew what he was going to pull out. The old sailor's face was brown as a berry. He had a fringe of hair around the back of his head and a fringe of whiskers around the edge of his face, running from ear to ear and underneath his chin. His eyes were light blue and kind in expression. His nose was big and broad, and his few teeth were not strong enough to crack nuts with. Trot liked Captain Bill and had a great deal of confidence in his wisdom and a great admiration for his ability to make tops and whistles and toys with that marvelous jackknife of his. In the village were many boys and girls of her own age, but she never had as much fun playing with them as she had wandering by the sea, accompanied by the old sailor and listening to his fascinating stories. She knew all about the Flying Dutchman and Davy Jones's locker and Captain Kidd and how to harpoon a whale or dodge an iceberg or lasso a seal. Captain Bill had been everywhere in the world, almost on his many voyages. He had been wrecked on desert islands like Robinson Crusoe and been attacked by cannibals and had a host of other exciting adventures. So he was a delightful comrade for the little girl. And whenever Captain Bill knew, Trout was sure to know in time. How do the mermaids live? She asked. Are they in caves or just in the water like fishes or how? Can't say, Trot, he replied. I've asked divers about that, but none of them have ever run across a mermaid's nest yet, as I've heard of. If they're fairies, she said, their homes must be very pretty. Maybe so, Trot, but damp. They're sure to be damp, you know. I'd like to see a mermaid, Captain Bill, said the child earnestly. What? and get drowned, he exclaimed. No, and live to tell the tale. If they're beautiful and laughing and sweet, there can't be much harm in them, I'm sure. Mermaids is mermaids, remarked Cap'n Bill in his most solemn voice. It wouldn't do us any good to mix up with them, Trot. Mary, Mary, called a voice from the house. Yes, Mama, you and Cap'n Bill come in to supper, 